Recently, we learned how to generate the correlation coefficient. Now I want to take a few minutes to discuss what the meaning of that number is. I'll leave the careful reading of this information for you to do on your own, but I want to take a moment and highlight a couple of the ideas. First of all, the correlation coefficient just measures the strength of the relationship between x and y for a particular pool of data that you have collected. This coefficient is also sometimes referred to as an R value. If you hear me use that terminology, don't worry, it's just another way to refer to the same thing. The first important idea that you need to know is that the R value is always going to fall between negative 1 and 1 inclusively. So if anybody tells you that they have a correlation coefficient of 2 or negative 1.2, you know for certain that there is a mistake there. When I try to take correlation coefficient and interpret its meaning, I tend to look at the sign of the correlation coefficient separately from the size of the coefficient. If the sign of R is positive, then the value of y increases when x increases. An example of this might be if I had an ordered pair where it referred to the number of hours that I have spent continuously traveling down a highway and the number of miles that I've covered. Basically, it makes sense as the number of hours that I've traveled goes up that the number of miles that I would have covered also goes up. If the correlation coefficient is negative, then it means y is decreasing as x increases. An example of this might be if I were to refer to the number of minutes that an ice cube has been out of the freezer and sitting on a counter, comma, the volume of the remaining ice cube. It makes sense that the number of, as the number of minutes that the ice cube has been out of the freezer increases, that the volume of the ice cube would decrease. The size of the, uh, the correlation coefficient tells us a lot about how strong the relationship is between x and y for the equation that you attempted to fit to it. Whenever you try to fit a line to a set of data. If that data is actually makes a perfect line, you're actually going to get a 1 for the correlation coefficient. If the points are a little bit out of line, but still basically making a straight arrangement, then when you fit a line to it, your correlation coefficient is going to be very close to 1. That's what being close to 1 would mean. However, if the points are all scattered and it doesn't look like a line would describe it too well, then expect a correlation coefficient that is closer to zero. To make these ideas a little clearer, I want to look at six separate graphs along with their R values. And I want to just briefly explain why those numbers are reasonable for the kind of graph that you see. If you remember right, the sign has to do with uh, if x is increasing, what's happening to y. And since here the x's are increasing, but the y's are going down for part A, for graph number A, uh, what it means is it, it's a decreasing slope. The fact that it comes out size-wise to a 1 means that this data is perfectly linear. So perfectly linear and downward sloping. For part B, for graph B, uh, you can see that the it's certainly not perfectly aligned. It doesn't look exactly like a line, but it does seem to have a trend of looking linear. So if I were to fit a linear equation to this, I would give it a positive value because it's going, uh, the y's are increasing as x's are increasing, but the, uh, it's not going to be as close to 1. A 0.7 might tell us that it still looks linear, but not as exactly as in the case before. For graph C, 
Notice I gave graph C the same R value. See, the steepness of the line has nothing to do with the size of the number. It's not like a slope. But the 0.7 is positive because, again, Y is going uphill as X is increasing. And, again, it looks about equally scattered as the one before, so I figured 0.7 was a reasonable size. For graph D, notice that it's got kind of a downward trend. If we were to put it a linear equation and they're trying to describe the data. So it, that's why it comes out to be a negative uh, 0 0.5. And notice 0 0.5 size-wise is not quite as big as 0 0.7. That's telling me that this looks a little bit less like a linear um, trend as the other ones over there because it's a little bit more scattered. E has just a bunch of points all over the place. Could Would the calculator be able to fit a line to it, sure, but it would do a pretty poor job of describing that set of data because it doesn't look very linear at all, which is why it has such a small 0.2 for an R value, small value. Uh, but it would be positive still, probably, because uh, if, the, if the line that it attached to it was going uphill. Now look at F. F, here we're trying to fit a line to this, and you can see that the graph is clearly not linear. In fact, it seems to be actually turning a U-turn. It looks more like a parabola, uh, even though it doesn't look perfectly parabolic. So even though your calculator could put a line through there, the R value would be very low, probably zero, trying to tell you that a linear relationship is not going to describe these points well at all. Finally, a few more questions about the uh, correlation coefficient. If you had an ordered pair where you had the number of minutes you study and then your score on a particular quiz, let's decide what would be a reasonable correlation coefficient. Now, as the number of minutes you study goes up, we expect that the quiz score would go up. So I'm expecting a positive value. And clearly, I think there's quite a close connection between how much you study and how well you do on the quiz. So I would even make this number be a pretty high number, close to one. Number two, your distance from a dartboard, comma, the number of times you hit the dartboard. Well, first of all, as my distance away from the target goes up, I would expect that the number of times I hit the target to go down. So that's what tells me my R value would be negative. As far as the size goes, uh, I think that probably how far I am away from a dartboard has an awful lot to do with whether I will hit the target. So therefore, I think it's going to have, again, a pretty high uh, correlation coefficient. Uh, that I made that one be 0.90 and the other one be 0.98 is rather arbitrary. Finally, if I made ordered pairs out of the number of siblings I have, comma, the zip code that I live in, well, I don't know that the number of siblings I have has anything at all to do with zip codes. And I don't think there's any relationship between the zip codes. So I expect this number to come out to be uh, zero or some other small number that has a low correlation coefficient, maybe 0.15 or something. Um, as far as whether it comes out positive or negative, because this really doesn't have an impact, my guess is, depending on the data that you have, uh, that it would either come out positive or negative or zero, but it would not be very close to one size-wise. Finally, here are some problems for you to try on your own. Uh, you may assume that somebody would try to fit a line to the particular data that you see. There's a couple of problems here, one and two styled in the ones we like the ones we just did, and numbers three and four are graphical. Uh, so go ahead and come up with what you think a reasonable co correlation coefficient would be for these, and please bring your results to class. Have a good day.